On, on, on the day of the accident, was that any different than any other day? Did it Was it just a routine check or...? Normal day, yeah. Um, 13th October. Um, a bit of an early patrol. That past four in the morning patrol was normally maybe like a bit later, a bit later on in the day when it's got a bit cooler. But uh, what it was, it was a, a, a I can't even say the word, a, a familiarisation patrol. So we only had 10 days left before we were due to leave. So another unit was coming out so we were going to show them the local area you know so we can't they we, we don't like get on one plane they get on another and we pass each other kind of thing you know they'll they'll send what's called like an advanced party some of their commanders some of their officers will come out we'll take them on patrol show them the local area show them where the village elders live um, they're, all, they're always key show them where incidents have happened before river crossings are no just try and give them as much information as we possibly can about that area that they're going to be operating in then for the next six months so uh, yeah, so we went out at past four in the morning, and there'd normally be about eight people uh, in each in each section. There's normally three sections, but there's probably about twelve in each section with these additional guys. So there were a lot a lot of people. You're talking like thirty six, maybe forty people on the patrol. You've got to walk in a straight line all behind each other, right. a metre apart from each other, and you're carrying about seventy pounds worth of kit. So it takes a long time to get anywhere. So you imagine 36, 40 blocks walking down the road on a track in, in a big snake line. You're quite, quite vulnerable, really, aren't you? You know, to, to attack, really. But um, two guys, two sessions got dropped off on a bit of high ground, do a bit of overwatch. And then I got tasked to go down to a local village and um, search some compounds or some houses for some uh, weapons or bomb making equipment. So a um, young guy in front of me, um, Aster and Jamie, he had his metal detector, it's called a, um, a Valen. So he's like sweeping this from left to right as he's walking along, looking for any of these improvised explosive devices that like, could be on the ground. So the metal detector will beep from like zero to three and then from three to like 10. Uh, but there's been a war in Afghan for over 100 years. You know, the Russians have been over there, aren't they? And all that stuff. So there's metal and stuff lying around everywhere. So. Yeah. If every time it beeps, you stop. You're not. You're not going to get no words. You know what I mean? So if it yeah. goes one to three. We'll have a quick look and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, let's crack on. If it goes above three, then we'll investigate it a little bit further. But you can imagine he's sweeping that, so you can't go either side of him because that's not been that's not been cleared. If he stood straight behind him, if it was to stand on a, on a device himself, then you're going to get. And that's why you're in single in fire. So single fire, or a meter apart, so you can space out. Um, and yet he'd been going along. It like like I say. Half four October, so it was probably about 17, 18 degrees um, in the summer. It's probably about 27, normally 30, 35 in the afternoon. But night time, it's about minus two. But in the um, as it gets towards more towards winter, it starts to cool down quite a bit. But still quite hot, 18, 18 degrees with 70 pounds worth of kit on. You know, you're going along. And uh, Jamie stopped us and uh, said, "No, Rita, it's a bad wire here." Yeah, we're going to have to go a different way. He said, okay, mate, don't worry, take a knee, uh, look out to your front. So he got down on one knee, and he dropped, dropped, probably dropped his kit off, looking out to his front, told the rest of the guys, get some water on board, buddy, buddy system. You know, one of them's looking at, looking out for the for enemy, one's drinking water, working in pairs, um, as they do. Then I looked across to the right-hand side, and then there's these three tracks leading down towards the village. Now, two of the tracks have uh, no markings on whatsoever, and the third track... And some like motorbike tracks on it, some footprints, and some cattle markings as well. So I looked at my watch, it was on that hand at the time, and it, and it weren't a tag earn either. It was a G10 for men. <laughs> watch. Still works, still works, G10 for men. Got it, got it off my um, off my wrist, I've put my wrist in a, in a bag or whatever, but got, still got the watch, still got the watch somewhere, still works. Um, yeah, don't behind G Top G Shock, you want to need a G10 for men, I'm mean, you'd watch to survive anything. But I uh, looked at that, it was about five to five in the morning. Uh, and I know that the per that those people go to prayers at about five in the morning. So I'm thinking ten to five, quarter to five. People generally start walking about. That track must have been used then. Night time in October it gets quite windy, so tracks generally get blown over. So I thought that track must have been used in the last ten fifteen minutes. So, so right, Jamie, I'm gonna set off down there, pal. So we used to look, start getting this kit on, turn around, talk to the rest of the guys, get the kit on, follow me, boys. Let's go. Jamie set off with his metal detector. I could see his footprints in the sand, so I'm looking where he's going, looking what the boys are doing, looking round, left of it, Jamie, go right of it, Jamie. Went about three metres forward and then stepped on the IED device. 
there. So um, next thing that I was aware of then, I lay on the floor on my back, big dust cloud around me, couldn't hear anything. Couldn't really, I couldn't see very much, my mouth was all full of dust and dirt. It was quite strange, I didn't feel it like I was in pain. I felt like it was like a stunned numbness on my body. You know, like a big pot forward just ran into you. Imagine like um, Mossy Masai running straight into your full Aye, tilt. Yeah. Jerry <laughs> Sorry, so you got your left time. So you know something, you know, I knew something violence had happened to me, but I weren't exactly sure w- what it was. Uh, looked down, couldn't see my legs at that stage. So straight away I started thinking self-help. You know, adrenaline obviously kicks in, don't I was thinking self-help. I'm a first day kitty, I had some morphine, uh, some tourniquets in the... Uh, looked across the this hand and that finger was hanging off, so I made a fist, kept hold of that finger, looked across this arm, it was like twisted behind my back, so I knew then that couldn't help myself, so I started shouting for a medic, so I was shouting as loud as I possibly could, but surreal, I couldn't hear myself shouting, it's quite strange, I knew I was shouting, but I couldn't, I couldn't hear myself shouting, uh, luckily, Jamie got blown forward in the blast, took some shrapnel to his back and his behind from the device, uh, crawled back towards me, started giving me some morphine, um, so I put some tourniquets on, on my limbs and like basically sorting me out, you know, then one of the guys come back from the other section, I could see him speaking to me, uh, but I couldn't I couldn't hear what he was saying, but I could see him, he was there speaking. The Jaggy drums. Yeah, they just, well. yeah, just a blast had done him in, yeah. And then uh, I knew the guys were there then, I knew the guys would do the job, that, that the train to do, so I just closed my eyes and just thought the boys were here and shut my eyes and drifted in and out of consciousness, kind of thing there. and. Um, they decided that rather than bring a, a helicopter in to our location, due to the, like the downward pressure that helicopters cause when, when they land, if there was any odd, more devices in the area, they could have gone off um, as well. We're only about three k's away from camp, so they just brought what's called a jackal, a jackal armored vehicle, into our location. Got me on the back of a stretcher, took me back to the main camp there, where there's a secure um, helicopter landing pad there. So they brought the chopper into there. Got me on that and then off I went to uh, to Camp Bastion. 